Okay, so let's start. So today, uh, our our study group, like a special data science, gonna be cover the chapter five is the attribute and support. Because in the previous chapter, we actually cover about the, some kind of coordination system a little bit more in depth, like a, based on the actual spherical geometry kind of situation. And then Derek covered that one very good, and then. I'm gonna I'm gonna start explain the chapter five like uh, attribute and support. So maybe anyone who has who has used the ArcGIS or some kind of a GIS related software, you guys actually are familiar with what is called uh, what is called the attribute. I mean, you know, because whenever we we go to we actually get the shape file and then. And then when we open that shape file in ArcGIS, for example, and then uh, when we right click on that shape file and then uh, try to go to the show the attribute table, and then we will find that some attribute table related to the, that geometry. So actually, it says about the what what the attribute refers to the property of the features. So whenever we have uh, these kind of uh, properties. And then uh, in, in this property has uh, some kind of a, like a, in case of Docker GIS, it has a kind of a, some of the table information like this. And then uh, usually the first one gonna be the, some kind of a GUID kind of things, just represent a geographical identifier for the that polygon. And then some set of the maybe related, uh, some variable gonna be listed. And then, and then we also have uh, some of the maybe maybe geometry, geometry attributes like uh, area or maybe length, etc. In this case, so so basically, attribute is a kind of a data table that does not describe the features geometry. So feature at like I said. Feature attribute can be derived from the geometry, which means in this case, in this table, in for example, maybe in case of the polygon, area of the polygon gonna be the gonna be the value come from the geometry, and also length gonna be the another attribute come from the geometry. But most of the attributes actually come from the not does not come from the uh, feature geometry. So for example, like a uh, name of a street and county or types of load or some, uh, some, some uh, NO2, like uh, I don't know how I can pronounce this name, but some of the air pollutant concentrations, like air quality monitoring stations. These are the just kind of a, just simple example about the attributes uh, for the geometry. So, that's the kind of example. And then uh, when we say about the, sometimes time property can be seen as an attribute of the features. For example, like a date of birth for the person or construction, or sometimes maybe when we think about the migration track of the bird, and then uh, each, each observation tracking observation has the time stamps for the observations, like a migration of the bird like this. And then in that case, a time property can be also attribute of the features. And then we can maybe grouping our attribute based on the, these time properties. And also another thing we can uh, talk about is in here, we uh, we'll talk about that there is actually a lot of software we can Try to try to manipulate in the simple feature attribute table, like a geo pandas or post GIS table in the post SQL, and then SF object. Because especially in R, in R, when we try to looking at the SF objects, it actually has kind of a first one is a just kind of a data frame, uh, data frame to show the attribute not come attribute which do not come from the field geometry. And then at the end of the SF, there is actually called ATTR kind of a property 
which shows about the geometry attribute, like uh, some of the some of the coordination, like uh, some of the set of the x and y coordinates, etc. Those things actually attach to the SF objects when we open the that SF object. Because what is the good thing, uh, unlike a, like a SP object, which we which uh, we have been used previously before before SF is uh, uh, emerged, SP actually it is very hard to tracking the these kind of attribute tables. But in terms of the SF, it actually look look like a just kind of a data frame in R. So it is a, and then another good thing about the SF is uh, it is very easy to manipulate it by using the tidyverse, tidyverse, like a tidyverse packages, for example, because it is very easy to manipulate compared to the SP. So now most of the special analysis can, uh, special analysis are used, these SF packages are rather than the SP, but again, there is a still some of the a few packages still using the SP SP packages. So then in that case, we have to think about how to use the SP function, SP related functions when we have SP kind of a data structures. And also another thing is uh, when manipulating geomet uh, geometries, attribute value can be retained or modified. Like uh, for example, maybe when we have to get uh, some of the centroid of the polygon, like uh, this kind of a uh, polygon, and then uh, when we have, uh, when we thinking about the uh, where where is the centroid, maybe over here, this polygon attribute can be can be stored into the as a as a as a point in here. In this case, the attribute table stored as a store in the these polygon features still remain unmodified when we come, when we still when we get the, this kind of a centroid it is easy to think about though, in ArcGIS when you try to try to learn the what is called a feature feature two point because uh, in ArcGIS there is a two uh, uh, special data analysis the two called feature two point this one actually allows us to converting the, this polygon into the point, which is the centroid. And then uh, when we do this one in ArcGIS, and then uh, when we click open the attribute table to the, this centroid, you will find that the attribute table still uh, remain unchanged, even if we converting this polygon into the centroid as a point. So, but the thing is in case of the R packages, it might be have a warning because there, there is a still have a cases, it, does, it is not the case. Sometimes maybe when, when the geometry, geometry is manipulated, there might be have a, what is, uh, there might be have a attribute table does not uh, keep un unchanged, like uh, as it uh, uh, retained or modified. In that case, we actually have uh, some kind of a problem called support problem. Because what is why these one things happen is because like uh, for example, in this maybe if we can have uh, this kind of a line, and then the the things we the way we can store in the some of the attribute to attach to the this line is actually two ways. One is uh, maybe assuming this line actually have a set of the point, continuous point. In that case, each point like this, each point actually have a, their own properties, like attributes. In these cases, Maybe if we can try to converting, uh, converting to the this line to the point, etc. Each point has a different attribute attribute values. In that case, there might be have a support what is called the support problem. But maybe 
when we have uh, this line as a group, so this for the on this line, we only have a single kind of a attribute table. In that case, maybe when we convert this line in, as a point, that means this attribute table gonna be still transfer into the that point. And then that means support problem does not happen actually. So in this case, like uh, line in case, I actually said I give you the example for the line. So in that case, maybe assuming that the line actually, if we assume the line actually created by, by the set of the point, like uh, every point, that means the value actually applied to the every point. And then that one actually summarize all the point in the geometry. In that case, we have a kind of a point support kind of things. So that means every point has a different value, can be can have a different values. But if we can thinking about the line as a whole, as a one single group, that actually has a one single attribute table and then a every point, any point along the line has the same attribute properties. That is a, what is called a block support in here. Okay, so that's the kind of uh, how we can deal with the support. Cause uh, when I'm looking at the, this, this chapter, I actually quite understand about the what attribute is cause it is very straightforward and then it is easy to understand. But I'm a kind of a little bit struggle about the understanding the support one because it is a, a little bit complicated concept and then I haven't studied this kind of concept before cause so, so I'm a kind of a struggle in the understanding this one. And then I, what I just tell, explain about the, this uh, support is the other, based on the, what I just understand from this chapter. So if you have any question or any comments or any other thoughts about the, my explanation about the concepts, just feel free to let me know and then uh, you can just raise a question or you can also give your opinion about the, your understanding of the, this chapter. Okay, so do you have any questions so far? Anything? Okay, so let's move to the 5.1 then. So 5.1 is a kind of like a, for the uh, representing about the, what is called the attribute and geometry relationship. So as we, as we uh, know in the previous, see in the previous chapter, each polygon or each features actually can be, have a link to with uh, some set of, can be linked with a set of the attribute table, right? Attributes. So that means there is actually a relationship between the, this attribute and then a geometry. So in this chapter, actually learn about the, how we can understand the, this kind of a relationship and then a, what kind of a, what is called AGR kind of a relationship we can thinking about when we looking at the attribute uh, special objects for our analysis. Uh, so in this case, in here, it actually says about the maybe in the line string kind of example, when we have a load, we can say about the load, we have a load like this, like as a line segment. And then uh, when we say about the loads, load width is 10 meters. In that case, we can thinking about the maybe as a block support kind of a perspectives, we can say that this whole line has the same width of the 10 meters. Or maybe we can thinking about the, maybe this 10 meter can be the minimum or maybe maximum of the width or maybe average of the width. That means unlike a, unlike a block support, support perspective, minimum max average actually assuming that maybe there might be the, some segment has the 10 meters like this. And then uh, some road has a, a little bit narrow or some low segment has a much larger kind of thing. And then uh, when we average them, it, it, it has the 10 meters. This is a more like a segment various um, um, based or some kind of a point uh, point support kind of a perspectives. So 
that's the kind of things we actually think about the, what the geo attribute and geometry relationship is about. So in here, actually, there is uh, actually three things, three type of the uh, AGR in, in mentioned in the, this, this section. So first one is the actually constant, which is the, the, as the first example in this one. That means anything, any segment or any points when you're looking at the load width, it is the same value, it's a 10 meter. So that means attribute value is valid everywhere over the geometry, so it's the same. Aggregate means is kind of, when we aggregate the, these kind of width and then average them, that's the 10 meters. That's the how we can see about the aggregate things. So when we say about the constant is uh, maybe load width can be the one example, or maybe we can actually say about the, is this load type? Is the, is the load type is the highway or local, local arterial? or maybe just kind of a small, small local streets. Maybe if we have, if we actually de uh, assign the, this kind of a value into the, this one, into this line segment, that means regardless of the, any, any picking up the, any, whenever you pick up the, any points along the, this line, there is a, the type is the, always the same once we define the road type for the, this single line segment. That's the kind of example for this one. So maybe land uses for land use polygon. So once you have a, this polygon has a residential, that means any, any point within the, this polygon is a residential. And then maybe when we care about, about the commercial, Anyone within the, this commercial polygon is the commercial. That's the, what constant AGR is about, point support. Okay. And then the example of the aggregate AGR, like a block support is a kind of like a population density or total population. So when we're thinking about the, like a polygon, and then maybe we can think about the, this one is maybe, I would say census block, uh, maybe census block rule, I mean, okay. So, uh, I think wrong or, okay. So census block rule, in that case, very, maybe there is a maybe load in here and then there might be inside the block in this, like this. And then in that case, when we thinking about the total, maybe in this census block group, if we can say about that there is a 10,000 population living in this block group, maybe for example, just assuming that maybe in the US 10,000 is not the case in the block group, maybe depend, maybe in case of New York, it might be possible, but usually normal cities, it might not be possible. But anyway, assuming that the, within the that census block group, we have a 10,000 population living within the that, that census block group, maybe in that case, when we're looking at the, these blocks, maybe in this block, we can say about the, there is a 5,000 people in, living here. And then uh, this is a 1,000 and this is a 15,000. And then uh, this is a 2,500 uh, 2, living in there. In that case, we can say is a, uh, maybe this block group has a 5,000 and then this block is the 10,000. So within the, this block group, census block group, each polygon or each point can might have a different. And even within the block, whenever, when, when we can pick randomly pick up the points, there might be the different population number, right? So this is the kind of a case of the aggregates, okay? So that's the population or social economic variable or some emission of the pollutants. So whenever we have uh, this kind of a region and then uh, any point within the polygon can have a different level of the emission, pol emission pollutions level. So these are the kind of aggregates. And then uh, the final, the third type, 
uh, all the all the AGL relationships is what is called the identity in here. Because identity is a kind of like a very it is very hard to understand for me to do that. But uh, based on the based on the this explanation, like uh, in case of the county name, in this case maybe uh, maybe there is uh, some of the some of the county like this, and then uh, this county polygon, and then within the that census tract within uh, located within the this county. That census tract also belongs to the same count, have a same county name. When we're looking at the attribute table, and then there is a column called county. In that case, this census tract polygon, this census tract polygon has the same county name, right? But but the thing is, when when we still have uh, some kind of a uh, for the arbitrary sub area. That attribute loses the, its identity property because it became uh, some of the attribute. This one is uh, actually I really don't understand. Hard to understand this one. So does anyone have any idea about the, how I can understand this one? What I can understand is uh, maybe if we have uh, this kind of a census tract kind of a polygon, it still has the name, same name for the county name. But when we thinking about the some of the arbitrary sub areas like this. In that case, it is kind of a hard to, it, it, that attribute actually loses the identity like in here or these kind of randomly selected locations. That's what I understand about this one, but I still kind of was struggling about this, understanding that this example and also identity concepts. So do you have any idea about the, how I can, how that allows us to understand this one a little bit more easily? Any idea, anything? Okay, so in that case, maybe I can move on. So maybe anyone has any idea or any useful link that we, that help us to understand that this concept just feel free to leave your message on the Slack and then we will check on this. Cause I also tried search to the Google to understand that this relationship, especially for the, it is easy for me to understand the constant and aggregate cause it is actually point and block support kind of perspectives. So it is easy to understand about the, these two things in relationship. But this one is a little bit hard to understand. Even if it says about the, uh, county name as example. Okay, so Federica, you have uh, any thoughts about this one? Hello. Yeah. Um. Okay. Um. I'm not. Um, I'm thinking that um, we have uh some coordinates. Uh huh. Which identify uh which identify a feature geometry. So an, uh -huh. uh, it says an attribute identifies uh, a feature geometry. Mm -hmm. um, and then we call an attribute an identity variable when the associated oh. geometry uniquely identifies the variable value. Mm. So I think that like I'm thinking about when we got information for uh -huh. an idea, uh, which is like identified as a, a country, okay, a county, mm. okay. Mm. But then, uh, if we go uh, in a sub area, mm -hmm. uh, that information loses its identity. Oh, uh, because we go more in deep, and uh -huh. so become a constant attribute oh. because we uh. can uh, so um, hypothetically uh, that we cannot go even further into mm -hmm. um, 
inside. So let's I'm, I'm, this is my understanding. So like you uh -huh. have a county uh -huh. which forms a block uh -huh. formation. Uh -huh. and it aggregates um, coordinates and information on that block. Mm. Then when, I'm not I'm, I'm gonna say that that that's uh so I'm, I'm just um guessing that that could be sound sound reasonable so then then when you um go into a sub area mm -hmm. that that sub area uh loses the identity of a county mm -hmm. it's, it's it's now a sub area of the county Mm. So that information is now a constant attribute. So oh. if you if you can see like the first bullet point, it says uh, an arbitrary point inside a county is still oh. part of the county mm -hmm. and uh, must have the same value for county name, but it is no longer identifies the entire geometry that corresponds to, a, to the county. Uh. So basically we are going inside the block uh -huh. and, and that I, the identity of the block loses its identity to be a block and mm. it becomes a, a, a more, more specifically, a, let, let now here is named as a constant. Uh, so the attribute of, a, of the identity become a constant attribute. So um, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not that, that, that's the most uh, reasonable uh, thinking that uh, comes up to the, the top of my head. Um, um, what do you think? Is that? Okay. Um, uh, Derek, yeah. Derek also has a, has the her his thoughts and the chatting maybe could Derek could you explain your what you just uh, type into the chatting uh yes uh echoing or somewhat repeating what you both just said uh, uh -huh. to the best of my understanding in american counties at least uh, uh -huh. there's an area called the incorporated area where a city um, has control over taxation and land use, mm, mm -hmm, but outside yeah. the city, but inside the county, it's called unincorporated. Mm -hmm. So this is a case of your subset, as you were saying, uh, of where mm -hmm. uh, you might have loss of data because the city is only responsible for keeping data um, inside the city, but not for the unincorporated area. Mm, so you're saying is, okay, Assuming that this is the county like this, and then uh, there might be the, some of the, these kind of uh, incorporated urban area. Maybe when we pick up the, some of the arbitrary point within the, that area, it is uh, still belong to the county and with uh, some of the building type and land use information. But if we can choose this out of the, this one, it is uh, unincorporated, that's what you said? Yes, exactly. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Um, okay, yeah, it is still kind of a little bit confusing concept, but yeah, maybe just be free to share the link or some good information. If you think there is a good explanation about the, these things, yeah, just feel free to Google it because I also Google it my, on my own, but I wasn't able to find the good information related to this one, but if you find any good information to understand, help to that help us to understand this concept, just feel free to share that link into the, our Slack channel so that everyone can see and understand this one. So that's the thing. And then uh, let's move to the next one. So, and uh, after the, this kind of uh, AGR, like attribute geometry relationships, we will actually have a uh, special information actually belongs to the different phenomena types, like including the field, which is the continuous spaces, like every location has a single values, like elevation and air quality and land use, etc. So that means when we have uh, this kind of a, uh, this kind of a contour line, all the this, 
along the this line has the same elevation as a single value. That's the kind of a field of the example. And then when we say about the object, it is kind of a discrete set of the object, like a house, number of houses and number of trees and number of person. It is just kind of a counting and discrete set. When we say about the field is a field is actually kind of a very continuous variable uh, spaces. Like, uh, and also we can also thinking about the, when we actually have uh, some of the heat map, heat map of uh, maybe some, some surface, surface temperature in cities, in some city, like uh, maybe city of Austin, for example, Texas. In that case, when we try to drawing, visualizing the sum of the heat map for the surface temperature, that heat map actually have a very continuous kind of values across the whole the spaces. That's what is called the field is about. This one is actually very useful when we try to try to conduct what is called a special uh, special point pattern analysis. Because whenever we have a special point pattern analysis, we actually use these things. Or maybe some of some of the like uh, when we try to measuring the temperature of the, this area, and then uh, there is a uh, maybe three three stations that measure the temperature. And then by using the, some of the interpolation techniques, we will actually have a set of the heat map in that area. That is also another example for the continuous spaces for the field. So every single arbitrary point has the value, corresponding value in that each point. Object is a kind of a discrete which is a kind of a last image kind of things. So each cell has their own value, but it is a discrete, like a counting, like houses or persons, et cetera. And then aggregate is the kind of just like an aggregate, like a sum total average. Maybe if we can, there is a sum of the block, blocks like this. And then if we have a, this is a 20 household in here, 10 household, five household, and then 15 household in here. And then when we aggregate this one to the larger area, that means that there is a 50, house, 50 household in here. That's the, what is about the aggregate. It's a, sim, it's a very straightforward to understand this one. So that's the thing. And then let's, let's move down. And also, also, there is a there is a, some different ge special geometric types. Is a no single mapping to these phenomenal types, which is like a point may differ to the same location of the observation of the field, but uh, but also location of the objects, like uh, some stations or some of the observation of the objects. And line may be the kind of uh, borders or contour lines. That is a kind of like this, like when we actually present about the height of the mountain like this. This one is what this second one is about. And then less the pixel and polygon may reflect the sum of the field of the categorical variable, like, a, like a when we have a, this kind of a last images. And then a, by based on the underneath, underneath, uh, surface area information, we can say about the, all of the, these things is the residential or this one, the commercial, and this might be the industrial, etc. And then uh, this is uh, maybe park, open space, like OS. Categorical can be possible rather than the discrete value. So, and also best or mesh triangulation can be have uh, some kind of a node, edge and faces like uh, some kind of a decent polygon kind of a situations like this, like this to get the, some of the proximity analysis. That's the, what this one is about. So any questions so far, anything? Okay, so let's move to the aggregate then, whoops.
Okay, so aggregation and summarizing. So aggregation and summarizing is uh, quite simple. So it usually say about the, maybe if we have a, some, some kind of a geometry at, uh, attribute with a small geometry level, maybe we can actually aggregate and summarizing those things based on the data set. So in this case, in in the in when you're looking at the, these figures, it actually shows that uh, some uh, some county information gonna be aggregated is the bigger regional district level based on the ellipsoidal coordinate points, like here, maybe somewhere in 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 the center, and then and then every counties on uh, the counties within the this North Carolina counties actually some more. Uh, aggregate based on the, these kind of informations. So that's the how we can do about the, like uh, aggregating, like uh, for example, like uh, uh, populate total populations or those kind of things when we try to sum up, sum up, sum, summarize or summing the total to get to the total population about the, some specific region that we're gonna aggregate, we're gonna use the aggregate uh, to those kind of thing. And then uh, when we try to summarize, like uh, for example, if we have uh, like, a, like a median income situation, like uh, this is the county one, and this is the county two, and this is the county three, and this is the county four, for example. And then uh, each county has a median income information. Maybe when we get to the, summarizing to get to the larger region. In that case, we can gonna be do the attribute for the attribute value for the average of the median income. For based on the, these four counties. That's the how we can summarizing thing, not just the simply sum up, right? So depending on the, what kind of attribute we gonna try to use, to get to the aggregating. We sometimes use the average them, or maybe we can get sometimes the median, median value of the median income sometimes to get the more like a representable kind of uh, things. Maybe if these kind of distributions are highly skewed kind of things like this, in that case, we can get to the median one. Maybe sometimes we can think about the average one or sometimes we can actually use the mode value depending on the frequency of the value things that show up depending on the, the smaller area too when we try to aggregate to the larger area. That's the how aggregating and summarizing is about. And then, uh, and then also what this one, the figure 5.2 is what this one is to talk about is when we try to actually thinking about the aggregate the area, not the union or geometrical kind of things, maybe we can also try to thinking about the intersect with the rectangles and these actual counties. And then uh, there might be have a very small piece of the polygons gonna be uh, generated like this or sometimes like these larger ones. And then when we counting them of the sum of the rectangles, it might be can be much larger than the original county count. That's what this one is about. So, so sometimes when we try to aggregate and then intersecting the sum of the unit grid kind of things, maybe when we try to summarize or aggregate these things, the number of, number of objects we need to aggregate gonna be different. That's the, what this one is talk about. And then, um, but honestly, I don't know how we can use, apply these kind of things in our practices. But anyway, that's the, how we can get about the, these 667 and 2621 come from. Cause uh, depending on the, how we can intersect with the basic two different kinds of geometry, things and then uh, there might be the, a lot of a uh, different shape of the polygons can be generated and then uh, that 
when we sum up the, this kind of information up to the larger area as a group, maybe number of objects that needs to be aggregated should be different compared to the, just the aggregating the county or aggregating the, these kind of rectangles. And then uh, next one is actually a very interesting one, like a 5.3 is actually about the, uh, how we can interpolate the weight basis, weight area, area weighted interpolation. Cause this one is actually what I really use a lot. I also call this one is what is called a special apportioning technique. Special apportion. So that means, for example, okay, in my case, I will say there is a there is a what is called a LIT station in here. Okay. And then near to the LIT stations. I would say there is a, a lot of a uh, block group like this. Let's assuming this kind of thing. And then what I wanna do is actually within the walking distance from the LRT station, which is the 0.25 mile, like a quarter mile, and then I'm gonna try to make a rounding buffer like this. It is not an exact circle, but assuming that this is the kind of a walking distance buffer, like a 0.25 right, with a radius. So in that case, I will say about the sum of the total population, approximately value of the total population within the this circle. How can we do that? That is can be done by okay in this case in this census block group actually have uh, this kind of a portion, and then in this portion like here, and this portion is like here, and this portion is like this, and then we can actually think about the this circle actually consists of the this kind of a segment polygon, right? And then each segment, like for example, in this shape, actually belongs to the this census block group, right? This one. So when we take this one off, like uh, this one, and then it looks like this, right? And then we this this shaded one is the part of the that rounding circle area, right? So in that case, assuming that this census block group has the 2000 people actually living in this part, this census block group, I will say. And then this area actually, proportion of the, this area is maybe 60%, maybe per se. That means what's the, of approximate value of the that, that, that segment area. That is the 2000 multiplied by 0.6 is the 1200 people. It's the kind of approximate value. It's not the accurate count, but the thing is based on the, these kind of uh, input interpolation techniques, we can actually uh, doing, doing this one like this. So it's the same thing for the, under the this part, right? This part actually belongs to the uh, this large block group. And then by using the, this kind of area ratio, we can actually thinking about the approximate value of the that area. And then by combining all of the, these segment together, gives us to the total approximate value of the attributes, the attribute variables. That's the how weight area weighted interpolation is about. And then uh, this is also an also, also example about the, what is called the extensive variable. Because in here, extensive variable corresponding to the amount, especially for the propo uh, uh, proportional to the physical size, size, like uh, area or length or volume and count. 
In this case, we actually using the area ratio, right? Of the, of the distances block group to get to the approximate value of the total populations, right? And then uh, in, ten, in case of the intensive, like uh, for example, population density in this case, when we try to split into the smaller area, population density cannot be split the same way. It can be, it can be different depending on the how, which part we gonna be split into the, this case, okay? So, but the thing is when we try to get to the, the, that entire geometry, that population density should be the same. That's the thing. In, extens in case of the extensive variable, just the simply counting of the counting of the this part and this part gonna give us the 22,000 population. That's the what extensive variable is about. <laughs> okay. Do you have any questions or anything? So this is a very interesting because uh, in in my case, like uh, in case of the urban planning, we actually use these things a lot, like a special apportioning things. Because sometimes we have, there is a situation about the when, when we have a maybe county level data set, but the thing is we wanted to disaggregate that county level, county level data information into the smaller area, like a census track level. Because in my projects that I'm working on right now is, I'm actually thinking about the, okay, here is the, maybe I would say like a county like this. And then uh, I would say about the total, total number of, uh, number of homeless individual is a 22,000 in this case, in for, that, in, for in that county, which is quite large number of population homeless population in this case, but, but anyway, for example, if we have a, this kind of situation and then there is a maybe census track like this, depending on the proportion of the area, we definitely calculate about the, this proportion, area proportion of the, of the uh, each census track, right? And then based on the that proportion, maybe we can this, Lead, uh, distribute this number into the, this area, assuming that uh, all, all, all of them has a same kind of a ratios, area, uh, a pro pro proportion to the areas. But that is not always the case, because uh, maybe for example, maybe in this case, in this census block group has uh, a lot of uh, populations because of the, this is a, maybe we can say about the, this is a census tract of the downtown area. In that case, maybe there is a, a lot of apartment, high rise apartment into the downtown area. And then uh, in, that, in that location gonna be have uh, a lot of uh, homeless individuals gonna be clusters in that area. So those kind of weighting technique can be allows us to the more accurate distribution of the, this kind of a population. So actually this kind of a concept actually call about the, what is called the SAE, which is small area estimation. Uh, maybe I'm gonna try to show you the, uh, show you the example about the, what the uh, small area estimation is about. Everyone can see the, my screenshot like a publication screenshot, not the, not the textbook? Yes. Yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share this link for you guys. And then this one is actually an introduction to the small area estimation technique. So when you click the, these PDFs, small area estimation technique is, uh, there is a, a lot of a different type of the, how we can estimate the, estimate the, some numbers or count when we have a counting or 
number variable at the larger area. And then when we try to split these counts or value into the smaller area, there is a whole different kind of techniques. Actually, uh, in, in what the textbook actually says about this, what is called the direct kind of a method, which is the, we actually split the, our number or our number of accounts based on the actual observation data. But there is also what is called the indirect model based method. That means based on the, some of the literature review, we can actually select the, some of the indicators that significantly affects to the estimating the numbers. By using the, those kind of a parameter in, into the model, we can actually calculate the estimate count of the, some population or something. That's the, what is called the indirect small area estimation method, okay? So these are the, this public, this report is the actually, they actually using R to, uh, to show the how to do the small area estimation because uh, in R packages, there is a package called SAE package. We can use the, that SAE packages for the small area estimations. So this, this report actually shows about the, how we can try to do this aggregate the, some of the data set at the larger area into the smaller area. So this is a very thorough introduction of the, how we can do the small area estimation like uh, using the regression based model, which is what we call the model based approaches. Our actually in case of the American community survey actually use the, these kind of approaches when we, they actually have a larger area data set and then they try to disaggregate that data set into the smaller level, they actually use the, what is called these kind of model-based approaches to get to the estimates. That's the reason why when we downloading the American community survey data, we have a, some, what we have a column called the margin of error. That margin of error is gonna be much larger when we going down to the smaller area because that smaller area estimate is come from the, these kind of a model based approaches by using the larger areas, larger area counts, okay? So just, uh, I share the link to the chat and then just feel free to check this report. And then uh, I think that this report actually have a very interesting, especially for the, when there is a, some kind of a situation about the discount this aggregate some of the attribute data values into the smaller area level. Okay. So that's the kind of thing. And then let's move back to the, this one. So, um, up and down scaling is the same thing. It's a kind of a matter of the interpolation and Upscaling means the aggregating, and then the downscaling is the disaggregating kind of a problem. So, so like I said, we can do the this one is a area area based, or sometimes each each uh, area has uh, the other information that are very significant. We can use that value as the weight, other than the area, and then. And then also maybe we can use the other part of the parameter, like a, like a, not exactly related to the observation, but by using the, some of the model-based approaches, we can estimate the, some of the disaggregation estimate of the value at the smaller unit. Or maybe we can aggregate uh, that smaller unit into the larger unit. And then we can also check the, that when we aggregate the, those numbers, into the larger unit, maybe that estimate also has the same equal to the actual observation number for the validity. So those kind of techniques can be used. And then those are the what is called the upscale and downscaling kind of approaches. So it's the, it's the 11.57 and then I will say, I will say this is the end. <laughs>